Have you ever stopped to think about the kind of world we live in? About the kind of things people work so hard to achieve? I myself can't help but think about that all the time. From my perspective, I see a world searching for meaning and not finding it. I see a world where people try so hard to make a name for themselves, but never feel like they fulfill it. I see people desperately trying to fill a void in their lives with anything they can think of, but still feel empty inside. We are all trying so hard to find something, anything, to make our lives feel like it's worth something. We throw all our energy into what we think will bring us the happiness we so desperately want. Some focus on their careers. If they could just get that promotion, get more recognition, get more money, then maybe that will satisfy that hunger. Others focus on a relationship. Maybe if they could have a stable relationship with someone, they would be willing to marry. Then maybe they could start a family and maybe they won't feel so alone anymore. Others try to fill their lives with materialistic things. If they could have enough nice things, like a nice house, a nice car, nice jewelry, anything that portrays their wealth, then maybe that way they can get the recognition they are looking for. What most people don't realize is that you could have it all. Money, fame, power, a relationship with someone, and still feel like you have nothing. All those things cannot fill that void inside of you. By chasing after the things of this world, we end up losing ourselves. What people fail to see or accept is the love that God gives. Colossians 3, 2 states, Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. God's love is infinite and overwhelming. He has done so much for us. Here is a list of just some of the things that he has done for us. Number one, he loves us and adopted us as his children. 1 John 3, 1 states, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Number two, he listens to us and answers prayers. 1 John 5, 14 through 15 states, Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Number three, he forgives us time and time again. 1 John 1, 9 states, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Number four, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to be the ultimate sacrifice so that we may be saved and have eternal life through him. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Number five, God gave us the Holy Spirit so that we may not be alone, but in his presence always. John 14.15-18 states, If you love me, Keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Number six, he teaches us and guides us in all situations. In times of trouble, he reminds us of what he has taught us so that we may have his peace. John 14, 26 through 27 states, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And number seven, when Jesus lives in us, we have the fruits of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22 through 23 states, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, 
patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. As I said, these are just a few things he has done for us. I could go on, but I would be here for a while. But don't you see? God is the only one who can fill that void. He is the only one who can make us feel complete. When we accept his love, we no longer feel lonely, unsatisfied, forgotten, meaningless, or empty. His love is enough. I can honestly say that ever since I truly accepted him in my life, I've seen the fruits of the Spirit in my own life. I feel loved. I have true joy. I have indescribable peace. I am more patient. I want to be kind, good, and gentle. I have stronger faith, and I have more self-control. You can have these things too. Stop letting your pride get in the way of his love for you. If you accept him today, that void will only be a memory. 1 John 4, 13 through 16 says, By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent the Son as Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. Don't forget to check out my blog, which you will find a link to it in the description below. I hope you all have a blessed day. Before I go, I will leave you with this. In Numbers 6, 24 through 26, it says, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.